Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar. The presentation will begin shortly. Hello and welcome to Medication Adherence and Smart Devices for Clinical Trials by Philips, Ipsamed, and AWS. When you join today's webinar, you select a join either by phone or your computer audio. If for any reason you would like to change your selection, you can do so by accessing your audio pane in your control panel. Also from the control panel, you will, be, you will have the opportunity to submit questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane. We will collect all of these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And if we happen to run out of time and are not able to get to your question today, we will plan on responding to each of you personally through email. So please have those questions coming. The deck also will be available through SlideShare along with the recording of this webinar and that will uh, become available two to three days after the conclusion of this presentation. So keep an eye out for the follow-up email with all those details. My name is Aksana Pickerel and I'm the Global Segment Leader for Healthcare and Life Sciences at the at AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, and I will be a host and moderator for today's webinar. In addition to my introductory remarks on modernization of clinical trials, today's, today we will also hear from Dale Wiggins, who is the Vice President and General Manager of Philips Health Digital Suite platform, and from Andreas Schneider, Looks like we may not be advancing slides. Now we are. Um, yes, so, so after me, we will hear from Andreas Schneider, who is the Innovation and Business Development Manager at Ipsamed, and from Dale Wiggins, Vice President and General Manager of the Health Suite Digital Platform Business at Philips Healthcare. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into the intro and then we're going to have a much deeper conversation with a specific case study and example from Ipsum and Phillips. In general at AWS, we work with a large number of biopharmaceutical and medical device companies that, and, and also with both technology and consulting partners that are dedicated to supporting R&D innovation, manufacturing, distribution, sales and marketing, the entire continuum of the life sciences business. The extent and pace of innovation that's taking place today in the cloud is truly remarkable from APN partners that are building integrated preclinical R&D platforms to solutions for real world evidence that integrate data from preclinical, clinical usual care and other real world data sources to integration of voice and other uh, advanced technologies and innovative AI ML technologies in patient and provider engagement. And uh, those use cases support the entire continuum of what we're talking about here from early and preclinical R&D all the way through patient and provider engagement. And today we're going to focus on just one element of this continuum and that is clinical trials. I expect that most of you uh, who have been in the industry for a while are familiar with the challenges that uh, we continue to encounter, although the nature of some of those challenges uh, is obviously changing as the data streams, data sets are becoming more complex and the new analytic technologies are coming on board. Uh, the costs of clinical trials continue to rise while the pressure, price pressure continues to do the same. Uh, that's, that's been the case for a while. At the same time, uh, competition is strong in discovering uh, new molecules, uh, developing new, new medications, and everybody is pushing to speed innovation and commercialization of new um, medical products. At the same time, we're dealing with a vast number of disparate data sources and systems. As we all get excited about new data sets that become available, that also increases the complexity and the pressure on uh, our ability to make decisions in real time. 
And of course, patient retention and medication adherence is a significant challenge, and that's the one that we're going to focus on today. And uh, global collaboration is something that we continue to uh, hear from a lot of our customers, that that's one of the areas where the ability to do business in the cloud uh, continues to both drive collaboration and improve uh, outcomes in, in, in this globally integrated business. When we talk about the role of cloud and all of this, table stakes is the lowering of costs, the ability to tap into infrastructure as needed, like you would turn on a light bulb and, and get, uh, get the electricity flowing on demand as needed and pay only for what you use. Elasticity and scalability, flexibility and access to resources, those are really the table stakes of a cloud platform. We also talk a lot, uh, and we've spoken in previous presentations that uh, you may want to tap into at some point about our approach to security and compliance in managing industry-specific compliance at scale in the cloud. Uh, so, so if you want a deeper dive on the, our, our shared responsibility model and how we handle GXP controls and other compliance regimes relevant to this industry on AWS, by all means, uh, we can provide those links later. And fundamentally, what we're all after is acceleration of time to science. That is uh, how, it, how we innovated AWS, always working backwards from the end customer's problem. And increasingly, um, as, as everybody's interest turns towards optimal use of data and making every step of the clinical trial process as informed as possible, uh, application of innovative analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, what we, what we tend to focus more and more on is how do we support our customers' scientific decisions and operational decisions that can drive value or simplify operations at scale. So scientific decisions, we used to talk about the right compound and for the right indication, then increasingly delivering it to the right patient at the right time. And now as the nature of medical products continues to change with a growing interest in digital therapeutics, in integration of multiple modalities, in delivery of innovative treatments, it also starts to uh, shift the conversation towards the right engagement and the right response. Uh, when we think about new product launch, when we think about ways to integrate disease management programs with multimodality um, delivery, all of those uh, design elements become important in launching new medications. And then, of course, at the operational level, speeding patient recruitments, the recruitment optimization uh, of retention, that, which is one of the elements we're going to cover today, and being able to do this in real time with real data and derive truly actionable insights from the analytics that we build is, is key. And now to dive more deeply in a specific example of a challenge that Ipsamed faced uh, working with, H with Philips Healthcare and with AWS, I'm going to turn over to Andreas Schneider from Ipsamed and uh, really looking forward to the story. Thank you so much, Oksana. And I'm truly excited to introduce you to the challenges around medication adherence in clinical trials. And then also describe how we have joined forces with Philips and AWS to build a new digital solution to resolve that challenge at hand. So if you could please change to the next slide. Thank you. The Ipsamec Group is a leading developer and manufacturer of injection and infusion systems for self-medication. Also, we are a renowned diabetes specialist with over 30 years of experience. Our pharmaceutical and biotech customers, they partner with Ipsamec delivery systems for the development and manufacturing of injection systems and corresponding services. These pens and auto-injectors enable patients to easily self-administrate liquid medication at home. Ipsamed is headquartered in Burgdorf, Switzerland, and operates a global network of manufacturing sites, subsidiaries, and distribution partners worldwide. The Ipsamed group generates a turnover of about half a billion US dollars and employs approximately 1,600 associates. 
Next slide, please. Ipsomed offers a broad portfolio of self-injection device platforms, ideally suited to meet the diverse patient needs. Most importantly, our devices propel safe and effective self-management across chronic disease areas, well beyond the self-injection of insulins. With the ever-increasing interest in new generation biologics, the market for self-injection is experiencing enormous growth these days. The vast majority of devices will be used for the injection of innovative monoclonal antibodies and biologics that need to be subcutaneously administrated. For instance, medication to fight autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis or asthma. Self-injection devices, however, they also open up new concepts of self-care for other disease areas, including immuno-oncology, chronic pain and migraine. Self-injection devices, they're instrumental in shifting the point of care from the hospital to the home. Most importantly, the pharmaceutical industry now also adopts such easy to use devices during large phase two and phase three clinical trials. This to promote self-medication early on and to enable patient-centered designs of clinical trials. These trends, however, they come with an inherent challenge and that is poor medication adherence. For instance, Non-adherence costs the US healthcare system alone around 290 billion US dollars annually. Furthermore, and most importantly for the discussion here, poor adherence in clinical trials undermines the value of the very clinical trial. First, drugs don't work in patients who don't take them. Poor adherence may well result in failure to confirm efficacy. Similarly, poor adherence results in underestimated efficacy. This, in turn, may again result in unwarranted dose escalation before licensing and an overestimation of the proposed dosages. Just as poor adherence reduces efficacy, so it reduces the apparent frequency of adverse drug reactions. Starting, stopping and restarting a prescribed drug, re drug regimen risks adverse reactions from repeated and exaggerated first dose effects and withdrawal reactions. Poor adherence may well impair the development of breakthrough drugs and new medication for rare diseases. Unless adherence is controlled, the study size may have to be unnecessarily large. And finally, there is an increasing number of instances of failures of drug regimens until near perfect dosing regimens uh, can be achieved. Here, adherence is of pivotal importance for the efficacy of the drug. We therefore urgently need new solutions to the industry challenge of poor medication adherence in clinical trials. Most critically, the challenge of non-adherence in clinical trials now results in a complex two-tier problem. The first tier relates with how to actually tackle non-adherence in clinical trials and directly leads to connected smart drug delivery devices. First, we need new tools to real-time monitor drug administration during large multi-site clinical trials. However, there is currently no reliable and objective adherence data available. Adherence data then needs to be shared beyond the local clinical trial team at the single site. CROs, for instance, may want to learn real-time about the adherence data quality and integrity that relies on objective measures. Furthermore, poor adherence translates into huge administrative burden at the trial sites involved. Huge efforts are being made to manually track whether patient's administration of the investigational drug is in line with the protocol at hand. There is therefore a need to streamline these admin processes as well. And finally, concerns around data privacy and security further accentuates the need for new approaches to tackle the problem at hand. The first tier problem leads to connected solution, a connected drug delivery device solution, in fact, that is used for advanced adherence monitoring. However, the connected solution to the first tier problem also directs our attention towards the second tier problem. And that second tier problem relates with the hidden roadblocks of actually implementing such a connected device system. Connected smart devices, they first need to be integrated with a secure medical IoT backend. One first have to implement a full device management solution that does address the lifecycle management of connected smart devices. This has to happen well before thinking even of a therapy solution. 
for instance, how to configure and remotely push updates on a smart device, how to constantly monitor these connected smart devices uh, during clinical trials, how to retire devices once the trial was completed. The second tier problem therefore requires a secure medical grade IoT cloud platform. And this is exactly what we have built together with Philips and AWS. So let's now start discussing the solution in a bit more detail. Leveraging the power of connected devices and the cloud, Ipsomet, Philips and AWS now contribute to enhance medication adherence in clinical trials. The connected drug delivery solution consists of three key components. First, the smart connected injection device, smart pilot. Secondly, the device management solution, smart services. And thirdly, the device management cockpit that actually monitors and tracks the device performance data. With the help of the smart reusable monitoring device, Smart Pilot, we initially transform the purely mechanical auto injector into a fully connected smart product system. Smart Pilot comes with two sets of key functionalities. One monitors device usage and makes available the therapy relevant injection data to providers, caregivers, and healthcare stakeholders using Bluetooth connectivity. The other then guides patients step by step through the actual self-injection process, including, for instance, authentication of the medication or advice on what use step needs to be performed next. The full system, however, moves well beyond the actual smart pilot device. It also features smart services, that is our connected device management solution. Smart services, as a matter of fact, reflects the medical grade IoT backbone. This device management solution is now needed to securely and seamlessly provide relevant injection data to say CROs, pharma and other third parties. The solution also includes a device cockpit to carefully monitor all device performance related aspects. Ipsomet leverages the device performance data then to actually remotely manage the connected devices used during clinical trials. In so doing, we then realize a set of value adding device management services to our pharmaceutical partners. With this connected drug delivery solution at hand, we not only enable our pharmaceutical partners to address the medication adherence challenge, but also address the fact that it is challenging for third party companies to build a secure device to cloud infrastructure and manage the connected devices used in clinical trials. Ipsomet adopts the Philips HealthSuite digital platform that is a cloud platform built on AWS. The Philips digital platform allows us to connect devices to the cloud and remotely managing them. We can now store data, we can manage and scale device services globally within healthcare regulatory, privacy and security requirements. We have built a full device management solution that allows our partnering pharmaceutical companies and CROs to easily build therapy solutions on top of it to address non-adherence in clinical trials. In short, Ipsomed addresses the hidden device-oriented challenges, such that our partners can now focus very easily and streamlined on the therapy solution instead. How do we achieve that? Well, we separate between two streams of data, injection data and device performance data. First, we fully encrypt the injection data locally on the smart pilot device. The injection data is then channeled through the gateway securely stored in the Philips Health, Health uh, Cloud platform and then made available to CROs, pharmaceutical partners via standardized interfaces, so-called REST APIs. Such injection data serves as key input for our pharmaceutical partners to then build therapy solutions, such as clinical trial dashboards and therapy management apps. Second, the connected devices also generate vast amount of device performance data. The device performance data now serves as input to the Ipsomet device management cockpit. And this cockpit provides the status of the drug delivery devices and allows Ipsomet to remotely manage the smart device fleet. In so doing, we generate device management services to CROs and pharma that speed up time to clinics and also de-risk both the development and the operation of connected drug delivery devices. After now having sketched the solution, I'm extremely pleased to now introduce you to Dale Wiggins, VP and General Manager for the Philips HealthSuite Digital Platform. Dale 
we'll introduce the Philips Health Suite digital platform in more detail. Thanks, Andreas. Great to be here. Appreciate the partnership as well. So, make sure I can move this slide. Let me first give you a little of the rationale why, because I think that's maybe a question in some people's mind. Well, you know, uh, Andreas, why didn't you just use AWS directly? And this is a challenge that Philips faced roughly six years ago. We had customers, our customers, that were asking us to help them provide seamless care to their patients and their users, not only in the hospital space, but seamless out into the home and then back into the hospital space as well. We had great solutions in both of those domains. We have a tremendous franchise with consumers as well as clinicians, providers in the hospital space. But we needed a way to bridge that data, bring that data together. And obviously the cloud is, is an obvious solution for that and something that we really wanted to leverage. So we had the question, does each business within Philips try to learn the cloud itself? Do we all make mistakes? Do we all face those challenges? Or do we do it once as a business so that we can benefit from that and the benefits from, of the economies of scale? We also had to make a strategic choice. Do we want to make a, a closed ecosystem within Philips or do we want to make it open to anyone? And as we thought about it, we said, well, healthcare challenges are, are only going to be solved through open ecosystems. And scale is really only achieved through an open ecosystem as well. So that's what fundamentally why we created the Health Suite digital platform to one, enable Phyllis businesses, two, enable other businesses, but more importantly, to facilitate the ecosystem that we believe is going to be solving the real needs in healthcare today. So the other choice we made is, well, do we try to build our own infrastructure or do we create a close partnership? So we looked at the various uh, cloud, public cloud providers and AWS was a great choice for us because of, I think, two main areas. The obvious one is their global breadth, their scale, their reliability, um, et cetera, all the things you, you know about. But I think another key um, aspect is the willingness to partner, the willingness to work with us on capabilities that may not be readily available today, but the willingness to work with us to solve joint problems so that we can uh, solve those, those global health problems together. So now let me talk about what are the key components of the Health Suite digital platform? So first and foremost, in the healthcare domain, no one can afford a health a security incident. You can imagine what would happen to to our business if we had a major breach of patient information. So that's why we we started out from day one establishing a security first mindset. We had to be paranoid. You know, it's we're just maniac, if that's a, a, a uh, correct adjective to word around our security obsession. So we established what we call our information security management system. It's a common word, but it really forms the core of everything that we do. What we find with a lot of clients is that their, their traditional approach is more of a technology first approach. Maybe they don't have the experience in terms of working in that always on uh, cloud environment, but operations and how you make sure your operational processes um, conform to that information security management system is absolutely essential. So then once we establish that, that then that allows us to 
fulfill the various privacy, security, and regulatory con controls that we see globally in all the markets that we play. At the core of that in, is really, I think, been wrapped up very effectively as part of the high trust certification, which we've achieved. And we really view that as an industry best practice that allows our customers and our customers' customers to really have the security that that complete end-to-end -end solution is held to the tightest level of controls. So I already alluded to it, but in the healthcare domain, you have to always be on. And that's why it's absolutely essential that we have 24 by seven operation support. That's not a, oh, your best effort. It actually needs to be guaranteed. If you have a, a, a patient on the table, if you need to get information from one person to the next, you need to make sure that that can happen with, with a time uh, latency that, that is absolutely required. And then lastly, we have found that many clients need expertise. Um, uh, my, my friends in Amazon might not like me saying this, but cloud is hard. Um, to do it effectively, to do it at scale, and to do it at the right price point sometimes requires additional expertise, and that is something that we work with all of our clients on to really help them build their solutions effectively um, so that they really do reach their, their business goals in the time frame that they need to. So I'll go into the next slide a little bit more deeply in terms of the specific platform services. But the key is that we orchestrate not only the services, but the managed infrastructure in a way that it all works together and it all works together under a, a common um, identity and access management layer that really helps to ensure some of the security and privacy controls that I mentioned earlier, but also allows it to adapt to the various workflows that can get rather complicated in the healthcare environment. Um, and we've also found the need to ensure that that identity and access control layer can also federate not only with the hospital enterprises, which typically deals with, with on-premise um, uh, LDAP-based um, solutions, but also when you go into the consumer space, federating with social identities as well and being able to span that all together. And then lastly, let me highlight that, you know, one of the things that AWS does extremely well is allows you to build your solutions in a very agile way and not be forced down one, one specific path. It allows you to be very agile in terms of not only how you develop your solution, but how you build the business case. So choosing what you need and paying for only what you use is really a key tenet that we brought forward as part of the platform to really make it um, uh, appealing and beneficial to all our clients along various, um, really across all the, the use cases that we play. So going down to the next level of detail. So if you look at it from a, a, a market texture uh, standpoint, this is how we, we, we put the platform together. So at the, at the lowest level, you see all the AWS services that you, you, you know and love. Um, and they, as we'll get into a little bit detail later, these are really the enabling uh, technologies that help us build the platform in a, in a highly effective way. So what we do within HealthSuite is we ensure that those services are done in a way that is fully compliant with our higher level identity and access management layer. So what we build are essentially managed brokers that instantiate these services that integrate it and orchestrate it together, not only with other AWS services, but these platform services that we build um, 
in, in this middle tier. So let me talk specifically about some of those. So at the foundational level, we try to provide those, those value-added services that we find to be a little unique to the healthcare domain. So let me talk about a couple of them. Auditing. With HIPAA, with healthcare, there are specific requirements around auditing access to patient records. Who accessed what and when, as well as um, how long you keep that information, how you need to retrieve it, et cetera. Um, yeah, of course you could build that yourself, but we have found businesses able to quickly put together their solutions using those things that virtually every healthcare application is going to need if they're going to um, uh, provide a, a true solution. Let's talk about data, uh, databases. Uh, AWS provides tremendous capabilities in database infrastructure and database services. But in healthcare, there are specific, very specific needs. So our clients um, not only pull together your, your typical uh, uh, patient observations, such as heart rates, et cetera, but let's talk about waveforms. You have um, uh, patients that, that have continuous streaming waveforms that want to be carried forward for either analytic, uh, analytics or storage-based applications. We have genomics. We have imaging files that typically come in through DICOM um, capabilities. These are all the services that, that we provide at the next layer to help you create solutions quickly um, in the healthcare domain through things like IOBridge, DICOM services, et cetera. Lastly, let me point to IoT, something that um, Ipsomed uses quite heavily. We have a, a great deal of experience going uh, into our consumer spaces in terms of integrating consumer devices for the last 10 years as part of a uh, connected, what we call a connected products platform. Today, across HealthSuite, we integrate over 12 million devices uh, into our broader services through that experiences. What we have found is most, most businesses think about IoT strictly from getting the data from the devices. What we have found is that if you're really gonna to come together with an IoT solution, there are a lot of other dimensions that you have to cover. How are you going to manage those devices? How are you going to provision those devices to users? How are you going to keep those devices up to date with firmware? How are you going to integrate those devices with maybe data from other IoT providers. These are the higher level services that we provide as part of HealthSuite on top of the core AWS IoT capabilities to ultimately enable these applications that you see up, up top um, represented at the application layer. So Andreas, why don't we talk about how we work together? Indeed, Dale. So, you know, what, what sort of key requirements, in fact, drive our solution and what were the capabilities we at DeepSumet uh, were looking for when, you know, driving into the overall landscape in a bit more detail? In essence, we at DeepSumet, we built self-injection device platforms that allow our partners to very quickly advance with their drug, with their investigational drug substances to the clinical trials. So such a platform approach, it does speed up time to clinics quite significantly, but that does not only relate with the actual connected device, but also with the full device management solution and the medical grade IoT backbone. So the device to cloud connectivity, that needs to be secured. And also the device management solution has to be in place independent of the disease areas our partners eventually look into. So ultimately, we want our pharmaceutical partners to very flexibly build their own therapy solution. So now, Dale, how does that translate again into HSTP capabilities? Yeah, so as I, as I just mentioned in the previous slide, you know, the core of what we're talking about here 
is our HSDP Connect services. So that's the category of services that basically ensures that any device that connects through our IoT services can only send data to us in an encrypted fashion. Um, it uh, orchestrates the capabilities to get to that management solution layer through our device management capabilities, our device control capabilities, device firmware, provisioning, et cetera. And then lastly, just you know, once you have that data um, in the cloud, what are you going to do with it? We've seen other uh, solutions that basically they get the data, um, but then it's, it's a complete different environment if you're actually going to try to make use of that. So we've built an entire um, application hosting and build environment on top of that that's all integrated and orchestrated together to allow you to quickly build your application uh, in a matter of a few days that fully utilizes that data. Um, you can tie it together with other platform services. So let's take a use case where you have uh, streaming data coming in from your device. Um, typically, you aren't gonna wanna commit that, that full data stream to a, a patient health record. You might want to develop algorithms on top of that before you actually commit it to that longitudinal record. Basically, it's your choice as to what those services are that you're going to be pulling together to meet your very specific uh, use case. And then lastly, if you're going to do that, um, typically you're going to need some expertise. So both uh, Philips and, and Amazon are really well positioned based upon our experience and our respective domains to help them uh, get the information they need to quickly get that solution to market. So, um, the obviously we don't do that ourselves everything we do is built upon aws capabilities um you know the, to me one of the key advantages to the cloud is everything is scalable and elastic um if you had to um uh provision all the resources on the back end cloud that ultimately you might want at the highest uh levels of scale or during the highest demands it'd be very difficult to make a lot of our business cases work. But that is what AWS is so great about. Um, the, the database capabilities, it allows us to uh, provision things that are really suited for things like streaming data, but then also easily move that to, to um, database technology that's more suitable to, to transactional longitudinal health records. So having that flexibility, having that ability to use best-in-class capabilities that are suited for purpose is really what we, we rely on from AWS. And then lastly, you know, security is only as good as your weakest link. So if we can't count on robust security capabilities, um, then we cannot provide that those higher level assurances. Um, security is, is everyone's game and AWS gives us the confidence that we have a great partner that's in, in, ensuring that if you use that technology in the right way, it's going to be kept secure. So Andre, Andreas, let's talk about uh, the next key area for you. Well, Dale, in Indeed, you know, as I've mentioned before, we do partner with the leading big pharma and biotech companies out there in the world and now upgrading a traditionally mechanical drug delivery device into connected one for both commercial phase and clinical trials, it comes with a certain set of challenges. Because typically, and that's also what I've mentioned before, clinical trials, they're global in nature. And they also do typically involve the multiple trial sites. And unfortunately, the investigation of clinical trial endpoints for the type of chronic diseases that we partner with pharma, that translates into recruitment of a large population. So we therefore have to truly collaborate with a global partner that does offer a medical-centered IoT solution that indeed scales globally. 
that does meet the requirements of the local markets uh, at the global scale. Thank you, and, and I think that's that's another area that we're really partnering together on. So Philips has, you know, as, as part of our core um, healthcare business, we have to operate in, in vir virtually every region of the world. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why we, we chose AWS is for their, their geographical scale as well. Um, we, we can uh, use their capabilities to meet data residencies data residency requirements in each region um, and their ability to provide redundancy gives us the fault tolerance uh, capabilities that ultimately um, you're going to need as, as we, we deploy these in, in various uh, high demand um, use cases. Um, you can't provide 24 by 7 support without continuous monitoring. Um, so that is another area that we, we partner very closely with AWS uh, in terms of ensuring not only the HSTP services that Ipsomet is dependent upon, but the underlying infrastructure is, is always up and managing those services so that we have continuity of service um, for Ipsomet at, at all times. So there, let us also quickly talk about data storage and exchange to provide for privacy, security and regulatory requirements. Well, obviously, we all are familiar with the fact that the pharmaceutical industry does operate in a highly regulated market environment. So compliance with all of the relevant privacy, security and regulatory requirements is truly key. And as you also mentioned earlier, Dale, there indeed is no compromise allowed. We cannot avoid to meet all of these compliance and uh, regulatory requirements. So compliance with all of the applicable norms is a truly necessary condition to build a full device cloud solution and then on top of that build the therapy solution by our pharmaceutical partners. So Dale, what's the needed from an HSTP perspective to meet those requirements? Yeah, great, great question. And, you know, that goes back to what I talked about earlier with our information security management system. And one, one of the core tenets that, that we set up front is we did not want our platform to be subject to the to users or to the, the operators of our platform. We didn't want to worry about essentially having an operator make a manual mistake and leaving data open to the internet. So that is something that we really focused on very early to ensure not only our processes, but ultimately we created these security controls in code to give us that additional level of, of comfort, if you will, in terms of we're gonna keep patient data secure. We're gonna only allow access to that data to people that are authorized to use it. So that, as I talked about in, in depth, that's the core to our information security management system. Um, it, is, uh, it is enabled through identity and access management service. It's, um, it's nothing can be instantiated in HSDP without data encryption in place, both for transit and at rest. And obviously, we could not do any of that if AWS didn't provide that core infrastructure with the capabilities to make that happen when we implement it in the right way. And finally, Dale, let's also maybe quickly talk about integratability and access you know, to that data that we're generating securely sent to the HSCP from where it's made available. As mentioned earlier, we've made the deliberate decision to pretty much distinguish between the device and the therapy domain, where us, Ipsomet, does take care of the device-related challenges, and we therefore enable our partners to very effectively and efficiently focus on the therapy solution instead. So we have aimed at the very open architecture 
of the connected device solution to facilitate that integration with third parties. So the use of standard interfaces such as REST APIs has been extremely important for us to really enable the integration of that adherence data in say dashboards or clinical trial solutions. So rather than creating data silos, we want our partnering CROs and pharmaceutical sponsors to access the relevant data and information in order to provide real-time overview of the adherence patterns per treatment arm, for instance. So Dale, how does that fit into the HSTP landscape? Yeah, great, great question. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, when we thought about this thing on day one, we we knew just as Ipsomed does, that today's health care problems are only going to be solved through open ecosystems. So Philips has a long history of working with, with um, uh, as part of open systems, whether that be through um, IHE, whether that be through DICOM, uh, whether that be through HL7 and FIRE. Uh, we know that that was going to be a core part uh, of the needs for our platform. And that's what we've created as part of our, our managed platform interoperability services. So we can leverage that, that domain expertise that, that we've created over the years, share that with our partners and allow that data to flow easily from other systems, both into our systems as well as out of HSTP to really facilitate that open ecosystem that, that you talk about. Um, the, the managed plat uh, platform data storage services that we talked about um, earlier allows you to integrate that data and also normalize it to various terminology services. Um, you know, it, I think that's one of the key things when you're really talking about interoperability, it's just, it's not just moving data, it's the ability to make sense of that data. So that's where, in, where you utilize things like our clinical data repository with the associated terminology service that allows you to do that normalization so that when companies like Ipsomed is putting together these integrated real-time views, ultimately you're putting together data in a clinically uh, appropriate context so that the clinicians that are actually trying to make use of this data can, can do it and, and ultimately provide that seamless care that we talked about in our vision. So obviously we can't do that um, without the uh, very robust and flexible uh, AWS data um, capabilities that, that give us ability to really right size the, the, the platform services that are needed to facilitate that, that these end applications. So Andreas, have you seen uh, uh, any good results out of leveraging HSTP just to set you up? Absolutely, Dale. So I think, you know, we've advanced really quickly uh, with, with all that we've done so far. And indeed, it's been instrumental for us to very quickly move into the MVP type of mode and start to develop such a solution from scratch within less than five months, in essentially. So let me also, uh, you know, ask you, Dale. You know, how about uh, the technical flexibilities and enhanced securities? Because that's also key to us to then eventually move forward and truly aim for the commercial uh, use case at hand. Yeah, great, great question. You know, and, and from my experience, um, most of the time when we start to think about a solution in a new new domain when we're really trying to, to provide new capabilities to, to customers and markets that that maybe have never tried this before um, we don't know what we're going to need um, you know next year so it's really important that we don't approach things from, okay, here's your monolithic platform, here's your monolithic uh, solution that you have to build off of. You really more need a toolbox approach um, that allow you to be very agile in terms of how you work with your customers to bring the solutions that ultimately they're gonna make use of. But 
toolbox, I think sometimes is the wrong approach if that's all you do. Because a toolbox of isolated tools somehow sometimes cannot can, can result in a, a solution in, in something that ultimately doesn't really provide a true solution. Those tools need to work together. And I think in healthcare that's especially important because of those security and privacy requirements that we talked about. So that's really what, what we strive to do with, with the platform, is not only provide the tools, but provide orchestrated tools all under that identity and access management layer. And also, Dale, you know, worth noting is that the collaboration truly goes beyond the actual development phase, right? We are keenly aware that Connected Health also includes operational elements and support structures to actually go for the 24-7 operation support in clinical trials. And also here, HSCP truly is instrumental to facilitate that element of simplicity. Yeah, great, great point. And, you know, I think it, it goes on, you know, just beyond, I, um, sometimes when you think about operations support, you think about break fix. And I think in the cloud, and when you think about things like GDPR requirements, and you really understand their requirements, it really requires a true partnership where we, we understand the needs. You know, GDPR requires the, the ability to revoke consent. So, you know, those are the areas that we have to work together in terms of, of ensuring that we meet those end-to-end -end requirements that ultimately we jointly have to, to fulfill in the markets that we serve. And Dale, at the end, it, there's also the element of cost saving. I mean, obviously we at Dipsumet, we also ourselves from a device perspective, strongly pursue a platform approach. And truly that platform approach is equally applicable uh, to the IoT infrastructure where we can maximize platform synergies and leverage a solution across the different pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, very, very true. And I think, you know, to me, that's where you really have to, uh, to, to use the overloaded term of uh, uh, total cost of ownership. Um, that, that's really what the key thing is, is that, um, I think a lot of times um, uh, we we tend to just look at what our current costs are, maybe in terms of development or our current cost in terms of runtime. But you really have to think through all those dimensions that you that you that you mentioned that span from operations um, uh, to to how you're actually going to deliver those those solutions to the customer. And I think that's that's where you know platforms can really help you because it really goes back to that scale game. Um, if you have to build out um, all these capabilities for each individual application, it can be quite expensive. But when you're able to leverage the, the scale of AWS on, on, on the infrastructure layer, leverage the scale of Philips from the, the, the healthcare operations standpoint, that's where we can jointly bring up about the solutions to customers at the at the um, price points that I think are really going to help to address um, you know a, a global problem which is you know just the cost of providing medical services to patients. So speaking of clinical trials 2.0 in action, I mean, what really is the added value that we now provide to the stakeholders involved? Well, in fact, the digital solution that is based on connected injection devices, it does set the foundation for new patient-centered clinical trial designs. Most importantly, advanced notification and reminder services, for instance, they may not only reduce the frequency of patient visits, but they also facilitate patient enrollment for trials. In so doing, we contribute, in fact, to improve participant convenience and retention that in turn yields better clinical outcomes. Automated adherence monitoring also reduces the admin burden at the clinical trial site. For instance, study nurses, they may 
configure alerts if a patient repeatedly injects partial doses only, or for instance, if a trial participant forgets to take a medication at all. The ability to now all of a sudden real-time monitor medication adherence and the progress of clinical trials is equally important to CROs and pharmaceutical sponsors. Remote trial monitoring dashboards, for instance, they now may all of a sudden include insights into detailed patient adherence patterns. And such decision-making tools then could well enable CROs to quickly respond to and say, for instance, take appropriate measures against emerging challenges in adherence patterns during clinical trials. So for instance, CROs, they now may think of device training and education seminars at certain trial sites should handling errors accumulate over time. So in sum, the connected device solution, it does facilitate safe and effective self-administration of investigational drugs during clinical trials. And it also does enable complete remote patient monitoring and improves the quality and integrity of the adherence data collected during clinical trials. And with that, I'm now handing over to Oksana from the AWS in order to introduce the live Q&A session. Wonderful. Thank you, Andreas. And Dale and Andreas, to both of you, I really appreciate you diving deeply into the solution, the problem to solve, because I think that's really what makes those stories um, truly meaningful, taking a specific example of medication adherence and bringing it home with um, like you said, Dale, it's really a triple platform play here um, that is what allows us to scale globally and get something meaningful accomplished at, at a very significant scale. So we only have a few minutes. We'll try to fit in uh, some of the questions that are coming in. And everybody, still feel free to submit additional questions because we will get back to everybody over email if we don't have a chance to address your question right now. So let, let's go ahead and jump in um, for the questions that we have in queue. Um, touching, touching briefly on, uh, Andreas, what you were just talking about, and Dale, about the support and integration with CRO and CTMS systems. How do you support this integration with diverse CROs and CTMS? Uh, what, what should others know about this that are listening in? I think you know what what really is important that uh, the underlying logic of the architecture that we have built here is that we successfully distinguish between the device and the therapy slash clinical trials domain. And in so doing, we are keenly aware that it is certainly not Ipsomet building the full product system. So rather, we have went and gone for a open architecture by design. So the device management solution that we build, it must be integrated with therapy solution. So we do have an open architecture in mind. Technically speaking, Dale, and maybe you can complement to that. I think, you know, what we think is keenly important here is that we leverage standard interfaces such as REST APIs to easily integrate with third party systems such as CROs or CTMS systems. Yeah, Andreas, I think you really captured it. I think the key is, you know, you really need to uh, adhere to those those open APIs, um, really ensure that you build your services in a way that they can be truly interoperable together. Um, and, you know, ultimately it gets down to being, being true to your word in terms of is it open or not. Um, uh, you know, we, as you and I talked about the other day, um, we can't, make judgments in terms of, of, of who your customers might want us to partner with. Um, we need to enable all essentially the complete um, set of permutations, if you will, in terms of how that ultimately end solution needs to come together, because ultimately that's how we're going to uh, have the maximum reach when it comes to uh, helping uh, patients live better lives. That's awesome. Uh, we do have more questions coming in, but I think we are running out of time at this point. We're closing uh, on top of the hour. So um, everybody else, we will get back to you by email. 
We uh, really appreciate your participation. Hope you found this information useful. And um, to you see links here for next steps if you want to learn more about AWS, about Philips, Philips HSDP, about Ipsameds platform and broader applications across multiple therapeutic areas. So there's a lot to learn. Please um, follow through, uh, reach back to us. We're very happy to engage. We also would appreciate if you can take a moment to fill out the survey after this webinar. We always look for your input and adjust our future presentations based on what we hear back from you. And with that, thank you very much for attending and have a great rest of your day, everyone.